Howdy doody folks, this is your good friend Cal. Uh, as usual, it appears that I'm making a video when I have a cold, so I'm going to sniff my way through this as I always do. <laughs> sniff sniff. Anyway, this video is basically uh, a precursor, or the first part I should say, of my how to sync your starter valves video for a 6th generation VFR. That is 2002 to 2009 and onwards, uh, 800cc engine. So anyway, uh, the biggest question uh, everyone seems to be a little bit, uh, I won't say confused, but uh, interested in, is uh, why one of the valves is non-adjustable. So I'll point that to this one over. This one. The rest of them have these little brass adjusters on them. And uh, what you basically do to adjust them is you can spin them with a nut, or if you pull them out on a spring, you'll see they're on a spring there, you can turn them. You do it click by click, and it basically slowly adjusts uh, that particular valve you're working on, whichever one you're working on, in relation to this one here. So what do the starter valves do, you might be asking me? Uh, essentially, when the throttle is closed, your butterfly valves completely seal up the intake. So uh, none of this adjustment, none of your idle speed adjustments or anything ever affects the position of these valves. That's just done by the throttle here. Which is stiff as it. Anyway. Alright, so when you get off the throttle, it closes completely. Now, I can't really see it easily here, but all these little valves here go to holes underneath these butterflies. So if I actually move this, you should see the pistons moving in and out. Now, underneath, on every intake port, is a hole right there, that one in the middle there not these ones over here, the vacuum um, ports. This is a California model uh, uh, throttle body, uh, which explains why there's three holes um, on nearly every uh, uh, cylinder, aside from this one where there's two. But uh, I'll explain that in a minute if you like. Anyway, so the air bypass or starter valves all come to that little hole there to let the engine get air in while you have the throttle closed. There are two things which affect um, overall how much air gets past these. One is your idle speed adjuster screw, which goes along this long cable here up to what I call, uh, hard to see, the idle plate. So if I can get this in here, there is, if I point to this, there is a plate just there. Now, when you screw the idle speed knob, you see how that turning? Just a little bit. What it does is it makes, it pushes on that plate. If you can just see it, you should see these valves moving a tiny bit as I screw it in. The more you screw it in, the more it pushes on the plate, the more it opens the valves. I've done another video uh, already on the fast idle wax unit, but the fast idle wax unit, controlled by coolant temperature, also acts on that plate, but not at the bottom, it pulls on it at the top. But in either case, both your idle speed adjustment screw and the fast idle wax unit do nothing other than affect how far open these pistons are. So it's not like a traditional choke where you're choking off the air. All you're doing is you're allowing more air through the engine, which is seen by the map sensor which responds in turn by adding fuel. So it's effectively the same as cracking the throttle a little bit, which is one of the things you can do um, with a coal engine. Uh, of course, because it's a, a fuel injected system, it also senses engine coolant temperature and intake air temperature and digitally effectively reaches the mixture up as well. So if, what I'm basically saying is none of this stuff is effectively related to what a choke would normally do. That is taken care of um, by the ECU. What the ECU can't do on this bike, which is why we've got the fast idle wax unit, is increase the airflow. It doesn't have that. Uh, I don't have a VFR 1200, but I could probably take a punt that a VFR 1200, because it has a fly-by wire or digitally controlled throttle butterfly, probably does have a servo motor that rather than having these starter valves, probably has something that opens the throttle bodies, uh, th butterflies a little bit when the engine is cold. I don't know, uh, VFR 500 owners, feel, uh, feel free to tell me. So, 
the next part of what we're talking about here is why there, one of these is non-adjustable. And the answer to that is one of these has to be a reference point. What we're doing by setting the idle speed is essentially adjusting this because like I say, when you screw in uh, your idle speed control screw, it is actually pulling out this along with the rest of them. So you're starting with your idle speed by adjusting this one, and then what you're doing is you're adjusting the rest of these to get the same vacuum reading as the reference point. You might find that you adjust your um, vacuum on all of these, uh, and then adjust your idle speed to compensate, and find that for various uh, engine wear reasons or whatever, that it goes out of sync a little bit and you have to repeat the process again. But ultimately, you need a reference point. If you didn't have a fixed reference point, what you might end up doing is adjusting all four of these to get them in sync, then find that your idle speed is too high, right? And you haven't got any adjustment on your idle speed screw. It is possible for your idle speed screw to be adjusted so far off that plate that it's not touching, you see? Not touching at all. You don't want that, right? Because that means you've got no adjustment here to bring the idle speed down, right? And the only, no adjustment here, Sorry, no adjustment here to do it either, and you're stuck in a loop. You just keep going around and around and around. That's why you always need to make sure your idle speed is controlled by some force on this plate. All right, to get it off to a little bit, so you're actually pulling out that uh, piston there on the number four cylinder. I believe it's number four starter valve, and then synchronising the rest of them to match that. Uh, so I'll make another video shortly, which I should cut to after this is done, of me actually synchronising my carbs. But this should be a good start. Hey, maybe I'll post this video by itself.